Section number one of John Keats Selected Poems. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Leonard Wilson. John Keats Selected Poems. La Belle Dame Sans Merci. O oh, what can ail thee, knight at arms, alone and palely loitering? The sedge hath withered from the lake, and no birds sing. O oh, what can ail thee, knight at arms, so haggard and so woe begone? The squirrel's granary is full, and the harvest's done. I see a lily on thy brow, with anguish moist and fever dew, and on thy cheeks a fading rose fast withereth too i met a lady in the meads full beautiful a fairish child her hair was long her foot was light and her eyes were wild i made a garland for her head and bracelets too and a fragrant zone she looked at me as she did love and made sweet moan I set her on my pacing steed, and nothing else saw all day long, for sidelong would she bend and sing a fairy's song. She found me roots of relish sweet, and honey wild, and manna dew, and sure in language strange she said, I love thee true. She took me to her elfin grot, and there she wept and sighed full sore. And there I shut her wild, wild eyes with kisses for. And there she lulled me asleep, and there I dreamed, Ah, woe betide, the latest dream I ever dreamed on the cold hill's side. I saw pale kings and princes too, pale warriors, death-pale were they all. They cried, La belle dame sans merci hath thee in thrall. I saw their starved lips in the gloam, With horrid warning gaped wide, And I awoke and found me here On the cold hill's side. And this is why I sojourn here, Alone and palely loitering, Though the sedge is withered from the lake and no birds sing. End of La Belle Dame Sans Merci by John Keats Recording by Leonard Wilson of Springfield, Ohio Section number two of John Keats Selected Poems This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Recording by Leonard Wilson why did I laugh tonight? No voice will tell. Why did I laugh tonight? No voice will tell. No god, no demon of severe response deigns to reply from heaven or from hell. Then to my human heart I turn at once. Heart, thou and I are here, sad and alone. I say, why did I laugh? O oh, mortal pain, O oh, darkness, darkness, Ever must I moan to question heaven and hell and heart in vain. Why did I laugh? I know this being's lease, My fancy to its utmost blisses spreads, Yet would I on this very midnight cease, and the world's gaudy ensigns see in shreds. Verse, fame, and beauty are intense indeed, but death intenser. Death is life's high mead. End of Why Did I Laugh Tonight? No Voice Will Tell by John Keats Recording by Leonard Wilson of Springfield, Ohio Section 3 of John Keats' Selected Poems.
This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Recording by Leonard Wilson. Meg Merrilies. Old Meg, she was a gypsy and lived upon the moors. Her bed, it was the brown heath turf, and her house was out of doors. Her apples were swart blackberries, her currants pods o' broom. Her wine was dew of the wild white rose, her book a churchyard tomb. Her brothers were the craggy hills, her sisters larchen trees. Alone with her great family she lived as she did please. No breakfast had she many a morn, no dinner many a noon. Instead of supper she would stare full hard against the moon. But every morn of woodbine fresh she made her garlanding, And every night the dark glen knew she wove, and she would sing. And with her fingers old and brown she plaited mats o' rushes, And gave them to the cottagers she met among the bushes. Old Meg was brave as Margaret Queen, and tall as Amazon. An old red blanket cloak she wore, a chip hat she had on. God rest her aged bones somewhere. She died full long agone. End of Meg Merrilies by John Keats. Recording by Leonard Wilson of Springfield, Ohio. Section 4 of john keats selected poems this librivox recording is in the public domain recording by leonard wilson the eve of saint agnes saint agnes eve ah bitter chill it was the owl for all his feathers was a cold the hare limped trembling through the frozen grass and silent was the flock in woolly fold numb were the beadsman's fingers while he told his rosary and while his frosted breath like pious incense from a censer old seemed taking flight for heaven without a death past the sweet virgin's picture while his prayer he saith his prayer he saith this patient holy man then takes his lamp and riseth from his knees and back returneth meagre barefoot wan along the chapel aisle by slow degrees the sculpture dead on each side seemed to freeze imprisoned in black purgatorial rails knights ladies praying in dumb oratories he passeth by and his weak spirit fails to think how they may ache in icy hoods and mails Northward he turneth through a little door, And scarce three steps, ere music's golden tongue Flattered to tears this aged man and poor. But no, already had his death-bell rung, The joys of all his life were said and sung. His was harsh penance on St. Agnes' eve. Another way he went, and soon among rough ashes sat he for his soul's reprieve and all night kept awake for sinners sake to grieve that ancient beadsman heard the prelude soft and so it chanced for many a door was wide from hurry to and fro soon up aloft the silver snarling trumpets scan to chide the level chambers ready with their pride were glowing to receive a thousand guests the carved angels ever eager-eyed stared where upon their heads the cornice rests with hair blown back and wings put crosswise on their breasts at length burst in the argent revelry with plume tiara and all rich array numerous as shadows haunting fairily the brain new stuffed in youth with triumphs gay of old romance these let us wish away and turn soul thoughted to one lady there whose heart had brooded all that wintry day on love 
and winged St. Agnes' saintly care, as she had heard old dames full many times declare. They told her how, upon St. Agnes' eve, young virgins might have visions of delight, and soft adorings from their loves receive upon the honeyed middle of the night, if ceremonies due they did aright. As supperless to bed they must retire, and couch supine their beauties lily-white, nor look behind nor sideways, but require of heaven with upward eyes for all that they desire. Full of this whim was thoughtful Madeline, the music yearning like a god in pain she scarcely heard her maiden eyes divine fixed on the floor saw many a sweeping train pass by she heeded not at all in vain came many a tiptoe amorous cavalier and back retired not cooled by high disdain but she saw not her heart was otherwhere she sighed for agnes's dreams the sweetest of the year she danced along with vague regardless eyes anxious her lips her breathing quick and short the hallowed hour was near at hand she sighs amid the timbrels and the thronged resort of whisperers in anger or in sport mid looks of love defiance hate and scorn hoodwinked with fairy fancy all a mort save to st agnes and her lambs unshorn and all the bliss to be before to-morrow morn so purposing each moment to retire she lingered still meantime across the moors had come young porphyro with heart on fire for madeline beside the portal doors buttressed for moonlight stands he and implores all saints to give him sight of madeline but for one moment in the tedious hours that he might gaze and worship all unseen perchance speak kneel touch kiss in sooth such things have been he ventures in let no buzzed whisper tell all eyes be muffled or a hundred swords will storm his heart love's fever's citadel for him those chambers held barbarian hordes hyena foemen and hot-blooded lords whose very dogs would execrations howl against his lineage not one breast affords him any mercy in that mansion foul save one old beldam weak in body and in soul ah happy chance the aged creature came shuffling along with ivory-headed wand to where he stood hid from the torch's flame behind a broad hall pillar far beyond the sound of merriment and chorus bland he startled her but soon she knew his face and grasped his fingers in her palsied hand saying mercy porphyro hie thee from this place they are all here to-night the whole bloodthirsty race get hence get hence there's dwarfish hildebrand he had a fever late and in the fit he cursed thee and thine both house and land then there's that old lord maurice not a whit more tame for his gray hairs alas me flit flit like a ghost away ah oh, gossip dear we're safe enough here in this armchair sit and tell me how good saints not here not here follow me child or else these stones will be thy beer he followed through a lowly arched way brushing the cobwebs with his lofty plume and as she muttered well a well a day he found him in a little moonlight room pale latticed chill and silent as a tomb now tell me where is madeline said he oh tell me angela by the holy loom which none but secret sisterhood may see when they saint agnes wool are weaving piously saint agnes ah it is saint agnes eve yet men will murder upon holy days 
thou must hold water in a witch's sieve and be liege lord of all the elves and fays to venture so it fills me with amaze to see thee porphyro saint agnes eve god's help my lady fair the conjurer plays this very night <laughs> good angels her deceive <laughs> but let me laugh a while i've mickle time to grieve <laughs> feebly she laugheth in the languid moon while porphyro upon her face doth look like puzzled urchin on an aged crone who keepeth closed a wondrous riddle book as spectacle that she sits in chimney nook but soon his eyes grew brilliant when she told his lady's purpose and he scarce could brook tears at the thought of those enchantments cold and madeline asleep in lap of legends old sudden a thought came like a full-blown rose flushing his brow and in his painted heart made purple riot then doth he propose a stratagem that makes the beldam start a cruel man and impious thou art sweet lady let her pray and sleep and dream alone with her good angels far apart from wicked men like thee go go i deem thou canst not surely be the same that thou didst seem i will not harm her by all saints i swear quoth porphyro oh may i ne'er find grace when my weak voice shall whisper its last prayer if one of her soft ringlets i displace or look with ruffian passion in her face good angela believe me by these tears or i will even in a moment's space awake with horrid shout my foemen's ears and beard them though they be more fanged than wolves and bears ah why wilt thou affright a feeble soul a poor weak palsy-stricken churchyard thing whose passing bell may ere the midnight toll whose prayers for thee each morn and evening were never missed thus plaining does she bring a gentler speech from burning porphyro so woeful and of such deep sorrowing that angela gives promise she will do whatever he shall wish betide her weal or woe which was to lead him in close secrecy even to madeline's chamber and there hide him in a closet of such privacy that he might see her beauty unespied and when perhaps that night a peerless bride while legioned fairies paced the coverlet and pale enchantment held her sleepy-eyed never on such a night have lovers met since merlin paid his demon all the monstrous debt it shall be as thou wishest said the dame all cates and dainties shall be stored there quickly on this feast night by the tambour frame her own loot thou wilt see no time to spare for i am slow and feeble and scarce dare on such a catering trust my dizzy head wait here my child with patience kneel in prayer the while ah thou must needs the lady wed or may i never leave my grave among the dead so saying she hobbled off with busy fear the lovers endless minutes slowly passed the dame returned and whispered in his ear to follow her with aged eyes aghast from fright of dim espial safe at last through many a dusky gallery they gain the maiden's chamber silken hushed and chaste where porphyro took covert pleased amain his poor guide hurried back with agues in her brain her faltering hand upon the balustrade old angela was feeling for the stair when madeline st agnes charmed maid rose like a missioned spirit unaware with silver taper's light and pious care she turned and down the aged gossip led to a safe level matting now prepare young porphyro for gazing on that bed she comes she comes again 
like ringed of frayed and fled out went the taper as she hurried in its little smoke in pallid moonshine died she closed the door she panted all akin to spirits of the air and visions wide no uttered syllable or woe betide but to her heart her heart was voluble painting with eloquence her balmy side as though a tongueless nightingale should swell her throat in vain and die heart stifled in her dell a casement high and triple arched there was all garlanded with carven imageries of fruits and flowers and bunches of knot-grass and diamonded with panes of quaint device innumerable of stains and splendid dyes as are the tiger-moth's deep damasked wings and in the midst among thousand heraldries and twilight saints and dim emblazonings a shielded scutcheon blushed with blood of queens and kings full on this casement shone the wintry moon and threw warm jewels on madeline's fair breast as down she knelt for heaven's grace and boon rose bloom fell on her hands to kether pressed and on her silver cross soft amethyst and on her hair a glory like a saint she seemed a splendid angel newly dressed save wings for heaven porphyro grew faint she knelt so pure a thing so free from mortal taint anon his heart revives her vespers done of all its wreathed pearls her hair she frees unclasps her warm jewels one by one loosens her fragrant bodice by degrees her rich attire creeps rustling to her knees half hidden like a mermaid in seaweed pensive a while she dreams awake and sees in fancy fair saint agnes in her bed but dares not look behind or all the charm is fled soon trembling in her soft and chilly nest in sort of wakeful swoon perplexed she lay until the poppied warmth of sleep oppressed her soothed limbs and soul fatigued away flown like a thought until the morrow day blissfully havened both from joy and pain clasped like a missile where swart paynims pray blinded alike from sunshine and from rain as though a rose should shut and be a bud again stolen to this paradise and so entranced porphyro gazed upon her empty dress and listened to her breathing if it chanced to wake into a slumberous tenderness which when he heard that minute did he bless and breathed himself then from the closet crept noiseless as fear in a wide wilderness and over the hushed carpet silent stepped and tween the curtains peeped where lo how fast she slept then by the bedside where the faded moon made a dim silver twilight soft he set a table and half anguished threw thereon a cloth of woven crimson gold and jet oh for some drowsy morphian amulet the boisterous midnight festive clarion the kettledrum and far-head clarionet affray his ears though but in dying tone the hall-door shuts again and all the noise is gone and still she slept an azure-lidded sleep in blanched linen smooth and lavendered while he from forth the closet brought a heap of candied apple quince and plum and gourd with jellies soother than the creamy curd and lucent syrups tinct with cinnamon manna and dates in argosy transferred from fez and spiced dainties every one from silken samarcand to cedared lebanon these delicates he heaped with glowing hand on golden dishes and in baskets bright of wreathed silver sumptuous they stand in the retired quiet of the night 
filling the chilly room with perfume light and now my love my seraph fair awake thou art my heaven and i thine eremite open thine eyes for meek saint agnes sake or i shall drowse beside thee so my soul doth ache thus whispering his warm unnerved arm sank in her pillow shaded was her dream by the dusk curtains twas a midnight charm impossible to melt as iced stream the lustrous salvers in the moonlight gleam broad golden fringe upon the carpet lies it seemed he never never could redeem from such a steadfast spell his lady's eyes so mused a while in toiled in woofed fantasies awakening up he took her hollow lute tumultuous and in chords that tenderest be he played an ancient ditty long since mute in provence called la belle dame sans merci close to her ear touching the melody wherewith disturbed she uttered a soft moan he ceased she panted quick and suddenly her blue afraid eyes wide open shone upon his knees he sank pale as smooth sculptured stone her eyes were open but she still beheld now wide awake the vision of her sleep there was a painful change that nigh expelled the blisses of her dream so pure and deep at which fair madeline began to weep and moan forth witless words with many a sigh while still her gaze on porphyro would keep who knelt with joined hands and piteous eye fearing to move or speak she looked so dreamingly ah porphyro said she but even now thy voice was at sweet tremble in mine ear made tunable with every sweetest vow and those sad eyes were spiritual and clear how changed thou art how pallid chill and drear give me that voice again my porphyro those looks immortal those complainings dear oh leave me not in this eternal woe for if thou diest my love i know not where to go beyond a mortal man impassioned far at these voluptuous accents he arose ethereal flushed and like a throbbing star seen mid the sapphire heaven's deep repose into her dream he melted as the rose blendeth its odour with the violet solution sweet meantime the frost wind blows like love's alarm pattering the sharp sleet against the window panes saint agnes moon hath set tis dark quick pattereth the flaw-blown sleet this is no dream my bride my madeline tis dark the icid gusts still rave and beat no dream alas alas and woe is mine porphyro will leave me here to fade and pine cruel what traitor could thee hither bring i curse not for my heart is lost in thine though thou forsakest a deceived thing a dove forlorn and lost with sick unpruned wing my madeline sweet dreamer lovely bride say may i be for a thy vassal blest thy beauty shield heart-shaped and vermeil dyed ah silver shrine here will i take my rest after so many hours of toil and quest a famished pilgrim saved by miracle though i have found i will not rob thy nest saving of thy sweet self if thou thinkest well to trust fair madeline to no rude infidel hark tis an elfin storm from fairyland of haggard seeming but a boon indeed arise arise the morning is at hand the bloated wassailers will never heed let us away my love with happy speed there are no ears to hear or eyes to see drowned all in rhenish 
and the sleepy mead awake arise my love and fearless be for o'er the southern moors i have a home for thee she hurried at his words beset with fears for there were sleeping dragons all around at glaring watch perhaps with ready spears down the wide stairs a darkling way they found in all the house was heard no human sound a chain-drooped lamp was flickering by each door the heiress rich with horsemen hawk and hound fluttered in the besieging wind's uproar and the long carpets rose along the gusty floor they glide like phantoms into the wide hall like phantoms to the iron porch they glide where lay the porter in uneasy sprawl with a huge empty flagon by his side the wakeful bloodhound rose and shook his hide but his sagacious eye an inmate owns by one and one the bolts full easy slide the chains lie silent on the foot-worn stones the key turns and the door upon its hinges groans and they are gone ay ages long ago these lovers fled away into the storm that night the baron dreamt of many a woe and all his warrior guests with shade and form of witch and demon and large coffin worm were long benightmared angela the old died palsy twitched with meagre face deform the beadsman after thousand aves told for a unsought for slept among his ashes cold end of the eve of saint agnes by john keats recording by leonard wilson of springfield ohio